Welcome back to the Bluegrass on this beautiful April morning. A little bit chilly, but other than that, uh, it's a great day. Uh, so yesterday I made a quick little video about uh, how to help your dog like firm up their hole during the uh, onset of the adolescent period. Okay, a lot of times when you're dealing with retrievers, especially retrievers that really like to, you know, fetch, uh, when they hit puberty, they just go a little bit crazy. You know what I'm saying? And they, they, you know, like your little puppy who's bringing, been bringing everything back and handing it right to you. They'll start running around the yard. They'll start shaking their head. They'll start just, you know, just they're just full of youthful exuberance, really. And so what I was showing you yesterday was uh, the mechanics of a trade-up game, or what we call an inductive retrieve. And uh, somebody asked me. They said, Well, Stony, what if you know? What if you're not really a, a food work trainer? Okay. Well, if you're not really a food work trainer, what I like to do. Uh, is a thing called pattern overlayment. Okay, so for those of you familiar with my channel, you know that I come out here and I teach my basic obedience skills on this little course. Well, so once a dog starts to understand the basic obedience skills as it relates to this course, then I just start putting the retrieving items into that pattern. Okay, so I've established two patterns here. The first pattern is uh, our basic vocabulary work and our physical skills which happens on the course okay our second pattern which is taught away from the course is uh you know bring a retrieving item back to hand okay and that's very important for me i like dogs to deliver things to my hand uh it's really for selfish reasons i just don't like bending over all day you know okay so once i have one base pattern which is the obedience done right then I start to overlay the retrieving pattern on top of that, okay? And so I just put the retrieving item in uh, our normal uh, schoolwork, right? So we're just walking, and then all of a sudden the retrieving item will appear. Dog takes a few steps. I take the retrieving item, okay? And so what happens is I'm taking two familiar patterns. One's a little bit stronger than the other one, and I'm laying the weaker one on top of the stronger one, okay? Now, so I'm going to finish this up with this dog, and then uh, I'll show you with Annie, and then I'll show you with this uh, case hund. Very nice. <laughs> oh my gosh, awesome. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a real fun, you know, uh, no food work uh, based way to, to get a dog to hold a retrieving item in their mouth for a longer period of time. And since they're focused on the original strong pattern, they have a tendency not to, you know, chitter chatter with their teeth or chew on the retrieving item. Okay. So uh, this is a good dog, Parker. He's got quite a bit of retrieving drive. He's not quite as much as Annie though. Annie's a, she's a wild character when it comes to retrieving. Okay. So she'll retrieve the most times, but once she started to hit that early adolescent phase, she started to want to take her retrieving item and really go party with it. Okay, oh, <laughs> get Parker, Parker out of the way. So look, so with Annie, I can get more reps, but a lot of times in the beginning stages of this process, uh, she'll get a little excited and she'll start messing up on her formal schoolwork. So she'll skip some steps or she'll jump right through the tire or she'll get ahead of me or something. And that's kind of what we were working on yesterday with the inductive retrieve. And I like doing the inductive retrieve. I think it's fun. It's easy. It's uh, low labor inputs, right? Okay, but this is really effective. But if you go back and you watch the first part of the video, and then you watch this video and compare these two dogs, who are a real similar age, notice how much faster I'm having to walk with her. Everything with her, she's just, she just has a different gear, you know? And so I think one of the big mistakes people make is if they have a dog like Parker who's just a naturally, a, you know, he's a good retriever, he's a good athlete, but let's say he's in fourth gear, they fuss at him trying to get him to be in fifth gear. And if they've got a, you know, a dog like Annie who's in fifth gear, they fuss at him trying to get him to be in fourth gear, okay? Key to being a good dog trainer is understanding, uh, you know, your dog's uh, optimum uh, activity level as it relates to teaching new behaviors. Some of them uh, just full of exuberance so you can get a lot of reps and you just try to make gradual progress with each repetition okay uh, and you know that they're not going to be perfect. Uh, some of them like Parker they're going to pick uh, the patterns up real quick and they're going to do a great job but they maybe are going to do it a little bit more slowly and you're not going to get quite as many repetitions in per session. You have to understand that you know, dog breeds share type, share traits, okay? But uh, the individual expression of all those traits uh, is a pretty wide variance, okay? Let me see if I can get this uh, case hound over here and show you. Okay, so I had to run over there and round up this uh, case hound, Hildy. And now Hildy is a perfect example of a 
a pattern overlayment, right? She is overlaying a pattern of ducking and dodging and moving away from having her leash put on that she developed at her house up in Ohio, right down here to my facility, okay? She loves to be out here and work and carry on, but she looks at the leash as getting in the way of doing the things that she wants to do. And so, you know, you bring the leash out, a lot of times she'll kind of like back off and look at you, or she'll sit down and when you get close to her, she'll dart away. That just all comes from experience, right? Okay, but those are patterns. Patterns habit, that's really the strong motivator in life. You guys see me doing those inductive retrieves, and everybody thinks it's about the food. This is the thing that everybody in the dog business gets wrong about food work. Food work is a very temporary stage in your dog's development, and all you're doing is you're using food work to stack repetitions and build habit, okay? Because habit is what's actually a strong motivator, okay? I mean, you can take all the food work, all the holding the ball under your uh, armpit, all that, listen. That's not what's gonna keep you safe when you're hiking in the mountains and your dog's off the leash, okay? That's, it's not, that's not what's gonna work. What's gonna work is stacking enough successful repetitions when your dog is young to create habit, to create work ethic, to create deference, okay? It's the same thing with dogs as children. You know, they just have to kinda of learn to do things because that's how they do things. You know, I'm 50 years old and I don't steal things because, uh, you, you know, I was raised that you don't steal things. I work hard because I was raised that you work hard. Uh, you know, I'm, I don't not steal things because I'm worried about getting caught. I don't work hard because I need the money anymore, okay? I work hard because that's how I judge myself. And if you want to do a real good job with dog training, you have to get past the, those cursory talking points of, of like, oh, here's a little trick to get this to happen and a little trick to get that to happen. So if I'm using the inductive retrieve to get a nice delivery to hand, or I'm using the walk and fetch or the pattern overlayment to get a nice retrieve to the hand, okay, like it, it doesn't matter. You're gonna get there the same way. And that's why I always in my videos try to leave a, you know, a lot of room for people that use different methodologies because we all end up in the same place if the methodology is employed correctly and consistently and with persistence, okay? So I have this little dog here and it's obvious that she's starting to understand this particular pattern, okay? So as I'm walking, okay, I'm gonna, everything's gonna be the same. I'm gonna take my retrieving item, I'm gonna present it so that she can see it and then I'm gonna lay it down right here and watch what happens. <laughs> you guys didn't actually think that case I was going to pick that up, did you? <laughs> I just threw that in there as a joke, okay? Listen, you can't escape genetics. Genetics is the, you know, the beginning and end point of successful uh, dog training, okay? So never watch my videos and think what I'm teaching you is all that important because it really all boils down to genetics. All right, now we're headed to the farm. I'll see y'all later.